Hello, Pisces. Hello, my water family. Elsie here to do a reading for the week ahead, my friends. How are you, my two fishes friends? I am two fishes in my moon sign. If you haven't been here before, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for giving this video a shot. If you are a Pisces, sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Jupiter, there could be some information here for you. Please remember that this is a general read reading, and we'll get along just fine. It's not for everybody, but it may resonate with you either now or in the week ahead. Whenever you find this reading, Pisces, it will always be for the week ahead. All right, my psychic little water babies, let's get it done. Let's figure it out here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. We're going to throw a couple of oracles, a few of them, and then we're going to hit it with tarot, find out what's coming up. I'm throwing these cards on the full moon in Leo. And so the full moon in Leo is is about nudges. It's about nudges to open up uh, for all signs, really. The general energy is to stop holding back. It's, it's a confessional type energy. Let's find out what's going on under this Leo full moon. Full moons, of course, are endings, right? And endings bring new beginnings. For you, we start with the peacock spirit. Let it shine. It's time for you to do a little bit of peacocking. <laughs> You know what? There's a song that I learned in elementary school. I'm just going to throw it at you right now. It is about the peacock. And the peacock says, peacock is a royal bird. It's very proud, as you have heard. It um, struts as only peacocks can and spreads its lovely colored fan. And I think for you, as it's coming to mind, I really do feel that it's time for you to let it shine. It's time for you to let your heart space shine and to just signal to everyone around you, look, Pisces is in the room. We have card number 46, which is a 10, which breaks down to a 1, which is the beginning of something. It's the beginning of a cycle. And so I want to say for some of you, you are sort of walking into this Leo full moon energy, sort of, you know, feeling good about the self. And I think it's great. I think it's great. So peacock spirit, let it shine. Let people see your freak flag fly. Be your authentic self. Let them see all of your colors here. We have green, which is the heart chakra. We have purple, deep violet, which is the third eye chakra. We also have pink here, I think. Yep, we have pink, which is the crown chakra, which indicates I feel like it's going to be a feeling, uh, a, a sort of a shift or a feeling that you will have in the week ahead. All right. We've got <clears throat> the snake spirit, time to heal. Oh, we've got two fives. <laughs> if you've watched my readings for any length of time, you'll know that when I see one five, it does mean lack. And when there's more than one five, to me, that is um, uh, a quick change. So if you have been in a healing time, Pisces, if you've been taking time away, pulling yourself away from people, possibly for fear of getting bit or getting stung or something happening quickly that you're not prepared for, I do feel that... Um, this is a time for healing and I do feel that this with this peacock energy and the time for healing it almost feels like the healing is done what's very interesting here is we do have four and six that is ten we also have fives two fives that is ten we have new beginnings here and one and one is two we have new balanced beginning here I love it bottom of the deck it says dragonfly spirit truth transcends illusion I want to say for those of you who who are, um, oh, we've got doubles again. We've got 22, which is stability. Fours mean you're on the right path. Twos mean stability. The dragonfly spirit. And I feel like for those of you who are seeing dragonflies, that it's, it's an indication that balance is very near. So if you are someone, and I don't mean like maybe once you'll see it, um, you know, in a book or a picture or something like that. I feel like it's like a, a, a dragonfly that won't leave you alone. Like it keeps landing on you or landing around you. It could definitely be a picture. Um, something where you wouldn't expect a picture of dragonfly to show up. Absolutely, it could be. Let's get one more card here and then we'll get into some tarot. Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, and Jupiter. Tell me about these water babies, the psychic ones. Tell me about that. Give me some energy for Pisces, please. Pisces, if you are interested in a private read, please look below this video. Uh, you will find a link that says more. And when you click there, there is a link to Wizio. Uh, it's the only place where you can book me. 
All right, so we have envy. It says, I am the same as everybody, but with different challenges. So I feel that the quick change here is that you have decided that you're no longer going to try and keep up with the Joneses. I feel like that you've realized that envy doesn't really serve a purpose. It doesn't really serve a purpose. I feel like we look at other people, we think we're behind based on, you know, we take our apples and oranges and we look at their basket of bananas and kiwi fruit and, you know, we, we don't realize that it's, it's, it's very different, right? They grew up with a different set of circumstances than you. And I think that sometimes we look at other people and we envy how their life is, but we really don't know all the ins and outs of their lives. We don't know. People put on happy faces all the time and that's really not how they feel inside. We've got worry. It says, I am learning that worry does not change an outcome. So true, my friends. It's so true. It is worry just squanders time because no matter how much amount of worry you put in, my friend, it's going to turn out the way it's going to turn out. It, it, it is it is what it is, right? It is going to turn out the way it is and no amount of worry that you give the situation is going to change the outcome. And for some of you, it might be a worry about love. Look, this full moon in Leo is when I'm dropping these cards. And this full moon in Leo is sort of opening the door, opening the floodgates to nudge you into the direction of friendships or romantic connections that you wish to fulfill at this time. So for some of you, I feel like you've been worried about this, worried about this love energy and how you're going to express yourself, what you're going to say. Maybe you don't have a discipline right now and you're, you're not disciplined enough to maybe gather the words or figure out what you want to say but also this could be someone who is coming toward you here it says I can't accomplish what I set my mind to and so maybe you're having a hard time making a decision about what you're going to do next but I feel like what's changing quickly no more envy that's what I think all right let's get some tarot let's throw some tarot at it for you Pisces Pisces, you do have a bonus read coming uh, this week, which will come at later in the week. But thank you so much for all the clicks and views on my last video. Anytime you get a thousand views uh, on a video, I'm always going to do a uh, bonus read. So thank you so much for gathering there, for sharing the video, for giving me your thumbs up and connecting with me. It's helping me connect to you. Here we go. Tell me about the peacock spirit, please. Let it shine. We do have the Seven of Swords. See, I feel like you've been playing under the radar. I feel like you've been concealing this big, beautiful peacock fan that, that you think that other people are going to think is weird. And so what? I'm weird. It's okay to be weird. Let the freak flag fly. You know what it's going to do? It's going to chase away people who are who are vanilla. It's going to chase away the vanilla people. And I don't mean colors. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's going to chase away those people, but it's definitely going to attract the right ones. Your tribe. The ones that maybe are a little bit left to center, a little bit weird. And those are the people who are going to accept you for who you are. So I feel like you've been concealing this big, beautiful fan here. You've been concealing yourself or sequestering yourself away. That's what it feels like. That you've been in situations where you felt like you couldn't be who you really were. We have uh, time to heal. I love it. Comes the Eight of Pentacles. I really love this depiction of the Eight of Pentacles because really when we look, we see five, right? One, two, three, four, and five. But what we don't see is that somebody is planning and and drawing more, drawing more plans um, to... They're going to work on it, right? They're going to work on it. They're going to, this person's really studying, looking over the details. What do I do this time? How do I get to the th place that I want to be? And so time to heal is just that. This is about self-mastery. It's about working on the self. Piece by piece, we build ourselves. We've got five pentacles, which tells me that maybe you have been feeling on the outside looking in, but we have three more pentacles that you're ready to work on. So I feel like you're ready to put the hard work in, work on the self so you can heal. And that is whatever you want it to be, Pisces. It doesn't have to be defined by anybody else. Tell me about envy, please. You've realized that, look, there's no reason to be envious. Everybody's carrying their bag of crap. Everybody's piling their their hardships on, on the porch in the gar black garbage bags. Everybody has them. We all have garbage, right? All of us. We have uh, the Ten of Pentacles. Look at this. When you decide to give up this energy of envy, looking at other people, seeing where they are, maybe you have, maybe you live in a thousand square feet, maybe they live in 5,000 square feet. I feel like you need to stop comparing yourself to others because yours is coming here. I feel like when you stop comparing yourself to others, you up your value. 
I want to say, you, by getting balance, by not looking back in the past and not too far in the future, to me, that's the two of pentacles, staying in the present moment. And I feel like eight and two is 10, and here's the 10. But I feel like you need to get out of this energy of thinking that you need to be in the same place that somebody else in your life is in. Everybody moves at their own pace. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are now going to pull cards for um, the week um, that is following the week ahead. So this is for the week ahead, which is the rest of January and February 1st and 2nd. Here is going to be the second week of uh, February. We're looking at the second week of February. What's come out on its side here is the Six of Swords. So I feel like that's coming out as a challenge here. Moving along, going from the chaos to the calm. In your head, it's swords, right? It's all about what's up in the mind. What else do we have here? For Pisces, we have the Empress. You're moving on. I feel like, you know, with the Empress here, that it's like you're learning lessons, you're getting the wisdom, you're the person who's growing, who's creative, and I feel like it's time that you moved away from this envy here in order to accomplish what it is you need to accomplish for you. The challenge is dropping burdens, to not worry about what other people say, what other people see, what other people do. I think that's the challenge coming up in the second week of February. Bottom of the deck, we have the tower in reverse. Somebody is refusing to see the change that's coming. When the tower is in the reverse, somebody's trying to hold up the tower with brute strength. I don't want the change, Elsie. I'm tired of going through upheaval. I'm tired of things changing and things that I can't control. You're right, you can't control the tower, but you can get pretty exhausted trying to hold the tower back. I feel like you can sidestep the tower. There's no way that you can do that. I'm just saying. The tower is what it is. When it falls, it falls. And it may not fall when you're ready for it. It falls when you are um, when you are at a place in your life that requires you to get back on the path you're supposed to be on anyway. All right, let's take a look at it. Seven of Swords, what's being concealed here? I feel like you're concealing your shine is what I think it is. Tell me about the Seven of Swords, please. I don't think you're being honest with yourself. I feel like you're far more spectacular than you are letting on to other people. We have the Ace of Wands. And it feels like when you do finally let it fly, let the peacock spread your spread your lovely colored fan and, and let everybody see who you are in all your glory, I think it is an exciting time for you. It brings in excitement here. Excitement that you, you didn't see coming. I want to say that you spend a lot of time keeping yourself concealed from others, your thoughts, how you look, who you are, who you love. And I feel like you keep yourself hidden. And I feel like the moon is saying here, look, you're, what you're containing here is what you don't see is that should you decide to come forward and have this new path with the eight of wands, oops, something flipped here. There it is. Your gut's telling you it's time to allow people to see you for who you really are. And who I think you are is probably someone who's quite psychic, deeply psychic, but in a very balanced way. This is card number two, right? Comes after the magician in the um, in the major arcana. First the fool, then the magician, then the high priestess. And I feel like who you are might be a psychic or a tarot reader or someone who, even though you don't have a label for it, you can see around corners and people come to you for advice. I feel like you're somebody who usually keeps to yourself or keeps this energy under, under, I just saw somebody shove a tooth under the pillow, you know, when you're a child and you're waiting for the tooth fairy. It's like you, you're, you're keeping it hidden. It's like you don't want anybody to know that you believe in the tooth fairy. I don't know why I'm getting that. Charlie's so silly. Charlie's my guide, by the way. Okay, so let's talk about the eight of coins. The Eight of Coins, so working on the self because it is time to heal and something is about to change quickly here. We've got the King of Coins. You could be working, uh, the, the part of the self-mastery you could be working on is your 3D world, where you live, where you work, the car you drive, the people you know, something. It could be financial here. It could be that you are working really hard on becoming um, financially aware or uh, being more responsible with money, uh, attracting opportunities to you that will bring you money here. Because we have eight and one in the hand of the king is nine. That tells me that what's coming up in the future for you is stability. It's dependability. It's um, it's um, 
confidence that you can do the things that you want to do regardless of how people feel about you. We've got the seven of coins and that is about waiting. So I feel like you're willing to wait as long as it takes in order to be able to get the stability. We've got the wheel of fortune. I love it. I love it. So the wheel of fortune is here and um, when the Wheel of Fortune is here, especially as it pertains to your pentacle world, look, we've got the Seven of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles. We have progression from waiting to doing. And then we have the King of Pentacles with the Wheel of Fortune. Look, I feel like it's time to heal the finances. And I feel that you've been working toward this for some of you. Not all of you, of course. It's a general reading. Take that into consideration. Parts of this reading may not resonate with you because it is general. It might resonate with one of the other 48,000 people that's out there, right? So we have uh, the Wheel of Fortune and it is all about fixed energy, right? Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, Leo. It's about um, meaningful change. And so I feel like all the work you've done on yourself, all the ways that you've been uh, working hard working on something working on the self i feel are about to pay off with you right here in the ten of pentacles and so i had talked about right the seven or the eight and the two right and the two is about keeping balance and not spending too much time in the past not spending too much time in the future but also things moving really quickly and you juggling a lot of stuff i feel like there's the what why you're going to be juggling is probably because of the wheel of fortune this is about great change but positive change but listen not all the change looks positive on the future on, on the on the surface right now it may look like a tower in reverse it may look like you don't want the change you don't want the upheaval but the wheel of fortune comes by and says to you look we have to go through these changes and we're going to go with these changes slowly but changes must come nonetheless because without change there's no progress pisces tell me about the ten of pentacles please i feel like you envy things that other people have in the pentacle world you might be someone who envies their car or envies their house or you like their hair or i wish i could afford to buy new clothes or something like that but i think your ten pence are coming tell me about the ten of pentacles please for pisces sun moon rising venus and jupiter we've got there it is the two of pentacles i call it out and there it is it comes up that's what happens when you are the empress you have to really watch what you talk about because you know that you can manifest things on the spur of the moment and so we have the two coins and that's what i was talking about with the eight coins here and the two equals the ten you need to you know it's going the past and the future, the past and the future. You need to learn how to have balance in the present moment. And I feel like everything that you need comes to you, whether that's pentacles, the house, the car, the more money. I feel like your money's going to be off the chain coming up, going into February. But I also feel like... um that you are going to be the one now who other people are looking at as someone who has got it all. That's what it feels like here because you chose to stay focused and chose to stay in the moment. We've got the Queen of Cups here. <clears throat> And we have the Page of Cups. Look, I just want to say that through all of this beautiful things that are coming, the Wheel of Fortune is also bringing love. I feel like for most of you, it's bringing brand new love. For others of you, it's bringing love from someone who you haven't heard from, someone who is going to message you and let you, uh, they're going to reveal what their feelings are for you. And so I feel like with the Queen of Cups here, somebody has a depth of love for you that they have not released to you yet. And I feel like with this full moon in Leo, this this moon will open the floodgates and nudge friendships and nudge romantic ships, right? And, and connections, romantic connections that need to come into fulfillment. So for some of you, you have incoming an incoming message coming, a very loving kind of message. For some of you, it could be from a mother, I'm just saying, because the Queen of Cups is that right it is feminine leaning energy but also masculine energy take it as it resonates feminine or masculine i feel like you're about to come into balance with love i feel like for for most of you for most of the collective this is brand new love with the page of cups here for others of you you're going to be surprised by someone that you already know that could be scorpio pisces or cancer it might be someone who walked away and who is on the way back look at that the ace of cups yep Somebody decided they didn't want to settle. They may have been in a relationship that they're no longer in. Something has, you know, that, that they are no longer in a Ten of Cups situation. It feels like they're bringing the Ace of Cups to you, right? Because the Eight and One is Nine. That's wish fulfillment. Let's take a look here. 
happening in the second week of February. So I feel like you, my friend, you could be the Empress. You could have Taurus or Libra energy, but you don't have to be because she's all the queens, right? When the Empress is here, all the queens are in the room, very balanced and creative and doting energy. Someone who may be in... Um, who may be in the years of childbearing years, but you don't have to be. Some people empress up late. I want to say that what is um, what you're moving on here from is a lot of burdens that you've been carrying due to this envy here. And so I feel like in the second week of February here, I feel like you love the self more. You're paying more attention to what it is that you need. I think you're paying more attention to leaving the chaos in your life, the drama behind, and moving into calmer waters here. It's time to drop some sort of burdens that you feel that you've been, I think your burdens will be behind you. You can see that the burdens are behind the Empress here. I feel like you are bringing that to a close here. Um, no more worry, no more carrying things that are not yours, no more, um, no more um, drama, no more stress. I feel like that you have the wisdom now that you are in this balanced energy because you've decided to disconnect from anything that doesn't serve you and it is time to move forward here. I really do feel for some of you the communication that you're getting is from someone who walked away from you or someone that you disconnected from. Take it as it resonates. This person may have been in another relationship that didn't work out for them. We do have the eight of wands here. Communication is what's going to happen. There is communication coming, my friend, whether you send it out or whether it's coming in. I'm going to go for now, Pisces. Thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. You know that I do. I'll be back with your bonus read. Love you guys. I'm out. Bye-bye.